This is a podcast with Mason Bolt on GFeed, a G module production. At present, with over 1,500 works in the collection, the Freed, Frank, Harris, Shriver, and Jacobson law firm began collecting art in 1979. Today, we welcome Mason Bolt, who for the last 20 years holds the position of corporate curator of the Freed, Frank, Harris, Shriver, and Jacobson art collection, working closely with Mr. Arthur Fleischer, senior counsel and founder of the firm's collection. Mason is instrumental in organizing the firm's extensive art collection, creating links between them throughout the numerous halls, common areas, conference rooms, and offices of the firm. He integrates the art collection within these diverse layouts and develops new spaces that encourages employees to interact amongst the art in the office. Welcome, Mason. Thank you. Uh, Mason, you are both a, a practicing artist and a corporate art curator. Uh, does one practice interact with the other, or do you see them as two separate things? Well, I principally see them as two separate things, in as much as my, my studio practice is oriented to, around the ideas that I'm engaged with in making art. Um, so my focus is, is really on those, that singular sort of approach and how that develops. Whereas with the, uh, with the curatorial work that I do and the management work I do for Freed Frank is, is taking a lot of different people's approach uh, to art making and trying to find those connections that will be interesting in the environment, uh, the, the work environment. So there certainly is a, a automatic sympathy there because I'm an artist and I'm working with artwork from other people, but I think that the curatorial responsibility uh, remains to be somewhat separate. Yeah, I mean the company has made um, a significant investment in culture, one could say, a venture into the art of collecting rather than just collecting art. Um, what are the principal foundations of the collection? Well, I think the, the, the fact that the collection is partly the firm's and partly the, what is on loan from Mr. Fleischer from his own personal collection makes the foundation a, uh, a different kind of uh, phenomenon. It's, it's not so singular. It's, it's really a combination of those two uh, collections that is always changing because Mr. Fleischer keeps purchasing new work mm -hmm. and so it really is a reflection on uh, his activity as a collector. So it, it's a combination of a, of a more static collection with an ever-changing one. So that probably is its foundation is that it's, it reflects that. Have these foundations changed over time? Or what did they begin with? Well, I think that, it, that in both cases, with both with Mr. Fleischer and with the firm, the, as you read uh, or spoke of earlier, uh, um, the, uh, the um, firm collected periods of artwork. Um, starting with abstract expressionism, really from the 50s on. Mm -hmm. So a lot of work on paper and a lot of, uh, uh, you know, from those different periods of time are reflected in the collection. But I think what has changed is that photography has been become more the passion of, of, of mm -hmm. Mr. Fleischer. So that's what's been infused into the collection for the last 15 years. And in the New York office, um, do you feel that the, the spirit of the collection, especially in nowadays and with the photography, um, reflects the identity of the company? I think the commitment to exploring what new things are happening in artwork today and throughout the period of time that they've collected uh, reflects an attitude uh, of uh, somewhat a progressive attitude really towards culture and an interest in supporting new ideas and new possibilities. And I think that's reflected in the way they approach their own uh, practice as, art, as a uh, as le legal uh, entity. Mm -hmm. And art in the workplace, in your workplace, um, it absolutely affects uh, the employees at the firm. How would you say it affects them? I find that they are, by and large, very engaged in it. Uh, you know, some people w are not as drawn to things, but a lot of people are. They're, they're, they're. I think, even even in a passive way, there's a re respect for this uh, dialogue that goes on in, uh, with images that surround them, and I, and 
there's curiosity uh, about what they're about. And I often give tours to, to uh, attorneys that are interested in, in knowing more about what surrounds them. Um, and so I think it has a, I think it's an educational and uh, positive sort of place that it, a role that it has. Mm. And do you ever um, yourself give those tours? I do. Uh, oh, I, yeah, I, I will be giving a tour to a group of uh, summer associates coming in this uh, in June. So, and if there's a, as if there's a group of people who are, are interested in doing that, they'll arrange time and and we'll coordinate something. And I'm happy to do it. And uh, when I was visiting there, there was a newly created meeting area. Can you tell us a little bit about? Um, what is installed in that space at this mm -hmm. time? Mm -hmm. Well, the the uh, the pivotal pieces in these two new areas, and they're right off of the uh, elevator lobbies on two separate floors, mm -hmm. is a, a lounge area that um, uh, is for gathering of staff and and attorneys, uh, and it's it's uh, much like a living room. It's, it has uh, sofas and chairs and and a, a, a table. Of, dining table and a coffee bar and that kind of thing. So it's meant to be a casual environment and the way in which that uh, has been uh, treated is, is two new neon pieces by Peter Liversidge, uh, who is a British artist, um, uh, were purchased and, and mounted there. They were kind of word pieces that uh, one, one is the artist, everything is connected is the, is the phrase. and. Uh, and you know that that new medium, uh, that bright uh, medium, really kind of livens up the area. So it's it's a fresh kind of thing, and I try to coordinate work that reflects that similar uh, point of view, similar aesthetic in that area. So that's what the recent changes have brought about. So we're not talking about decoration here, bright colored neon. We're talking about something more, something deeper, something reflective, um, a conceptual work. Exactly. Yeah. So it's possible to have conceptual work. In the office, course. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. There's a lot of it throughout the firm. There's, I mean, exactly. there's photography uh, that you would, uh, in some way, all work is conceptual, but there's some some work that is that is e even more pronounced that way. And I yes. do think that with these phrases in neon, there's a that that it, it uh, is thought provoking, meant yeah. to be thought provoking. And given the history of the, you know neon, the neon medium, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that that could be very interesting for the employees to engage in and maybe get curious and would potentially witness those things in outside the firm in right. museums right. and galleries, etc. Exactly. So, have you ever had any inquiry about the works in terms of the employees um, to about the work or uh, requests for the work to be closer to the work? I've had uh, people who have asked questions about it often mm -hmm. um, and will inquire about what that what something means or yeah why it is uh, considered important and that kind of thing. So that, that I'm engaged in a dialogue with many of the staff for that reason. So you're also an uh, art educator. In a, in a way, mm -hmm. and that's a little bit of the role. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, how often do you change the installations of the collection? And well, why change the collection? Yeah, the, it changed, uh, yeah. It changed uh, quite a bit. Uh, a few years ago because they did a major renovation of all the floors so all everything had to come down and then it, uh, it was a chance to reorient the whole collections which I did sort of like a museum who rehangs their permanent collection but with Mr. Fleischer's uh, collecting always being active new work comes in and so what really is the challenge for me day to day is to find relevant places for this new work to be situated where so I'm allocating in changing, and often with one new piece, there, there requires several things to change in order to accommodate it. So, and then we have what we had with this two new lounge areas that just were mm -hmm. introduced. That was a whole new allocation project in itself. But I would say that it's not a weekly. It's not like changing a show every right. month. And uh, but it it uh, has its it has various uh, moments of activity. I mean, yeah. Well, those associations are probably a very exciting thing for you, I would think, as a curator, to associate a particular work of art in a workplace, um, in a space that is an environment, really an environment, uh, a community for its employees. It is, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, uh, it's one of those challenges where, harking on the first uh, 
topic of our discussion today, being an artist and understanding the how uh, visual elements and content work together in a work is 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 sort of part and parcel of who I am. So it just it makes a lot of sense to to have that kind of uh, responsibility, and it feels very satisfying to be able to uh, be able to do it. Mason, thank you for joining us today. Thank you.